Perfect. Um, so as I said, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. My name is Jess Dudley and I'm a recent graduate of Leeds Medical School. I'm currently working on a frailty ward and, and I've got a big interest in frailty and pain management. Um, and today I'm going to present a summary of my essay in traditional Chinese medicine and its role in chronic pain management. Um, so as I'm sure you're all familiar, pain is an inherent part of the human experience. One way of characterising chronic pain can be pain that endures beyond a reasonable period of time for tissue healing to occur. Chronic pain is a life altering condition and it can exact a toll on patients, including financial, social and psychological effects. A meta analysis of chronic pain found approximately 28 million adults are affected by the condition in the UK. And moreover, chronic pain has emerged as one of the leading causes of disability worldwide. And as our population ages and develops more comorbidities, the burden of chronic pain continues to surge. So throughout my medical education, I've had the privilege of witnessing the remarkable effect of traditional Chinese medicine in the management of chronic pain. Uh, my interest began in third year when I undertook a course on the basics of TCM. We studied the principles, theories and many different forms such as acupuncture, herbal medicine and massage therapy. Following this, my interest remained and I chose to undertake my medical elective in the Himalayas, where I was really lucky to see alternative forms of medicine where they're routinely practised. I spent time with an acupuncturist and was really lucky to witness firsthand the transformative relief it provided to farmers suffering from chronic pain due to the intensity of their work. These, in these experiences inspired me to write this essay. And as such, I want to explore how, despite the advancements of Western medicine when treating chronic pain, there are of course weaknesses, for example, tolerance and addiction, underscoring the need for perhaps a more holistic approach. Furthermore, I want to explore the potential roles of herbal medicines, diet therapies and acupuncture alongside Western medicine. I believe this integration could ultimately offer patients a broader and potentially more effective approach to their pain management. TCM is a holistic system of healthcare that's evolved over thousands of years and is deeply rootable, rooted in the principles of balance and harmony. It considers the body, mind and spirit as interconnected aspects of an individual's health. TCM practitioners employ an array of diagnostic techniques to gain an insight into an individual's health. These techniques include pulse examination, tongue analysis and most importantly, the patient history. This assessment allows the formulation of personalised treatment strategies that target specific imbalances of qi. Qi is a fundamental concept in TCM. It represents the vital energy or life force that flows throughout the body and is considered essential to life itself. When the qi is hindered or disrupted in its natural flow, it can manifest as pain or illness, both mentally and physically. And these disruptions can be triggered by a variety of factors such as emotional stress, physical trauma or imbalances within the body. I just wanted to talk a bit about herbal medicine. It's a cornerstone of treatment for TCM and utilises many natural substances such as plants, minerals and animal products to restore balance and promote healing from within the body. Um, the TCM concept of individualised diet therapies actually aligns really well with our principles of Western medicine. Research in Western medicine has revealed improper diet can contribute to various diseases, including cancers. And a study from 2019 reported that dietary risk factors are responsible for more and more deaths each year, surpassing other risk factors now, such as tobacco use. Um, one example I wanted to talk about is ginger. So ginger has been used in TCM for two and a half thousand years and has been used to combat muscle pain, reduce swelling, ease arthritis symptoms and reduce headaches. One paper demonstrated that daily consumption of ginger effectively relieved pain in patients suffering from osteoarthritis and further studies have agreed with these findings. However, as patients increasingly combine medications and herbal supplements, there's concerns regarding potential interactions between the two. Herbal medicines and their sellers are largely unregulated and this can prevent, present safety issues. One herb, some, some herbs used in TCM have been found to interact with medications. An example is St John's wort. 
it's a supplement for depression and it's one of the most taken herbal supplements in the US. It's known to induce liver enzymes and potentially reduce the effect of certain medications, or it can cause unsafe effects with others, such as serotonin syndrome. So we need a better understanding of the compatibility of herbal, herbal remedies with medications uh, to develop safer treatment protocols. Um, furthermore, diet therapies do remain understudied. This is primarily because conducting high quality research is challenging and expensive, but also there's an inability to pattern and profit from natural substances such as ginger. This does diminish the incentive for pharmaceutical companies to invest in such extensive studies. Therefore, the scepticism lingers around TCM because there's a lack of empirical evidence in comparison to modern medications. However, the, the World Health Organization acknowledges that herbal medicines form the primary basis of healthcare for over 4 billion people worldwide. And many of our modern drugs have their origins in traditional herbal use. 200 modern drugs in the UK are derived from plants. Ultimately, I think a balanced integration of TCM practices and Western medicine may offer comprehensive and effective solutions to address the complex needs of patients with chronic pain. I just wanted to talk about acupuncture as well. So this is a practice that's gaining popularity in the West and it traces all the way back to 200 BC. At the heart of acupuncture lies the concept of stimulating the body's innate healing mechanism restoring the balance of chi and in the process promoting healing and pain relief. It involves the insertion of fine sterile needles into specific points. Research has helped us understand the underlying mechanisms of acupuncture. It's believed that acupuncture's effectiveness may be attributed to the release of endorphins, natural pain relieving chemicals in the body. This will reduce pain perception and promote a sense of overall well-being. As I said, acupuncture is gaining recognition in the West uh, for its efficacy in alleviating various types of pain, including chronic pain, post-op pain, headaches and neuropathic pain. A 2018 meta-analysis encompassing 20,000 patients across 40 trials found acupuncture to be superior to placebo techniques in managing various painful conditions. And this is now recognised in our Western medicine. Um, in the revised guidelines issued by NICE in 2021, it now includes acupuncture as a recommended treatment option for chronic pain. It's also important to emphasise that acupuncture is considered generally safe. In conclusion, acupuncture has gar garnered recognition and acceptance in Western medicine for its benefits in pain management. Um, and the table on the left, this just demonstrates how the acupuncture points are mapped into 14 main meridian channels through which the chi flows. Uh, the meridian channels are like a network and they can be compared to the circulatory and lymphatic system in the modern anatomy. Each meridian has a specific number and acupuncture points meaning. And the table on the right just demonstrates the commonly used acupuncture points and what they treat for. So one example is stomach channel 36. That's located on the front of your leg, just below the knee, and that can treat digestive disorders, fatigue and other illnesses. Um, so I just think it's fascinating, quite amazing how TCM originated from a time without diagnostic equipment or pharmacological advancements that we have now. Yet certain aspects such as acupuncture are now incorporated into our treatment guidelines today. There's a growing interest and recognition of TCM's potential in Western medicine, and a large percentage of that is aimed at chronic pain. Moreover, TCM offers a holistic approach that extends beyond symptom management. It allows individuals to strengthen their bodies through diet choices, exercises and lifestyle modifications. It's a prophylactic approach to disease. I, of course, recognise there's a number of limitations to implementing this. I work in the NHS and it's a wonderful thing, but it's understaffed and under-resourced. And a more holistic approach would mean longer consultations, which is difficult. However, in the pursuit of chronic pain management, the integration of TCM practices into Western medicine does hold immense potential. And by embracing this approach, we can provide patients with a broader spectrum of treatment options that not only alleviates pain, but also enhances their overall well-being. Um, thank you very much for listening. Is there any questions? 
Well, thank you very much, Jess. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was uh, an excellent uh, uh, presentation about traditional Chinese medicine.